a, a, a very important ASC 7 uh, uh, requirement. This is ASC 710 section 1231. Structural analysis shall consider the relative stiffnesses of diaphragms and the vertical elements of the seismic force resisting system. Unless a diaphragm can be idealized as either flexible or rigid, the structural analysis shall explicitly include consideration of the stiffness of the diaphragm within parenthesis semi-rigid modeling assumption. So unless your diaphragm is flexible, which can be prescriptively flexible or flexible by calculation, or rigid, which can be only prescriptively rigid, you shall consider semi-rigid diaphragms in your analysis and that really complicates the analysis. Now, there was a way out of this semi-rigid diaphragm analysis uh, e provided by 2012 IBC section 202, the definition section. The definition section defined a flexible diaphragm as a diaphragm that is considered flexible by ACE 7. That's what the definition says. But then rigid diaphragm was defined as as shown here. A diaphragm is rigid for the purpose of distribution of story shear and torsional moment when the lateral deformation of the diaphragm is less than or equal to two times the average story drift. So in other words, a diaphragm that is not flexible by calculation is a rigid diaphragm. Because of this definition, we could get away without doing semi-rigid diaphragm analysis. Any diaphragm that is not flexible by calculation is a rigid diaphragm. That's what IBC told us. Now, these definitions have been struck from, uh, from 2015 IBC. Does that mean that we now have to do what ASC 7 tells us to do? We believe the answer is still no because in section 1604.4 of the 2015 IBC titled analysis, a section, a sentence has been added, which will do for us what the definitions used to do. A diaphragm is rigid for the purpose of distribution of story shear and torsional moment when the lateral deformation of the diaphragm is less than or equal to two times the average story drift. So, so the deletion of the rigid diaphragm definition has essentially been restored in the analysis section. And, and that will, that will uh, help us if we want to avoid semi-rigid diaphragm analysis. So I believe that this is a pretty significant change to point out. Okay, a, a, a number of things that are not of probably the same degree of importance, roof snow load data that have to be shown on construction documents. The, okay, in areas where the ground snow load exceeds 10 pounds per square foot, the following additional information shall be provided on the construction documents, the drawings of the specs. Drift surcharge load, width of snow drift, you can read the items, that's not the point. The point is additional data are now being required to be shown on the drawings and specs when ground snow load exceeds 10 pounds per square foot, which is not that high. Uh, still, uh, uh, data to be shown on construction documents. We now are talking about flood loads flood design data, okay. ACE24, flood resistant design and construction. Uh, first of all, this is important. This document has been updated in the 2015 IBC to the 2013 edition of the standard. ACE24-13 is referenced in the 2015 IBC. And, and this updated standard no longer uses the structure or, or, or the, the, the risk category designation 
that we use elsewhere in AC 710. Instead, AC 24 2013 edition requires each building and structure to be assigned to a flight flood design class. This is new, a flood design class, which is then used throughout the standard to specify elevation requirements, flood proofing limitations.